have a power bar in there for 120 coming into the control panel for our Raspberry Pi, for our USB powered hub, but I also have those computer fans that are keeping the air cold inside the control panel and they need 12 volt and uh, normally that would be coming from a computer power supply, but uh, in this case we don't have one. So I'm going to show you some free options and show you how to fix those up so you can have a cheap free 12 volt power supply. So at home I've got a junk drawer and at the shop I've got junk shelves and uh, anytime something breaks, doesn't work anymore, we keep the working stuff, put it on the shelf because you never know where you're going to use it and um, reuse it, recycle it later. And um, so for this one here we've got a little AC converter to DC and it's 12 volt output. It might have been for charging some kind of tool in the shop and the tool failed but the um, AC adapter still works. So free, right? And um, what really is important is the inputs and outputs on your adapter. So for in this case, we've got regular 120 AC. That's you're going to plug into your power strip inside the control panel. And then output is 12 volt DC at 500 milliamp. So those computer case fans, you're lucky if it's about 100 to 200 milliamps. So and I got two of those fans. So we're still under the 500 milliamps. So this should work for us. All right, if you look at the end, it's got one of those kind of push in connectors uh, to allow this to charge up something. Uh, but it's got two wires. Essentially, all you got to do is clip this strip back a couple of the wires and then make whatever connections you need for what you're doing. All right, so this AC-DC adapter is probably the one I'm gonna end up using inside my control panel because I only need a little bit just to power up the fans and um, doesn't have to be too big or too bulky. Uh, for this connector here, um, I'm going to connect it to another little board that you just have the wires come in for positive and negative voltage and um, it's a computer board that does a pulse width modulated so you can actually do temperature control and whatnot so that when the inside of the control panel gets too hot fans kick on cool it down and then they can actually shut down or slow down and keep the noise down so this one's pretty simple we just got to cut it strip the wires back and um, that's it so diagonal side cutting pliers If you're looking for a power supply with a little bit more oomph to it, uh, you can get one of these. And this is a power supply for a Xbox 360. Kind of an older system now. You go through a thrift store or whatever. These are pretty much free. And um, I got this one for free from Slavery or The Boy Mechanic on Instagram. Thank you very much. And um, so I'm going to show you how to take this and wire it up so that you have a switching or non-switching 12-volt power supply that supplies up to 16.5 amps. So Tons of power in this one. So these Xbox 360 power supplies, um, you're gonna leave this end, you still need this end to plug in. Gets converted inside here, and then this end here that normally would go to your Xbox 360, we're gonna clip, and we're gonna probably clip it past this little bulge right here, and um, see what's inside it. So when you are cutting off this gray part of the insulation, um, make sure that you don't go too far and start digging into past the insulation and the individual wires inside. Otherwise you'll have to cut it off and start over. Now once you got that off, you can see there's a bunch of stuff going on in here. And you're going to have three of these yellow wires. These are your positives. Three of your black wires. These are your negatives. And then you got a blue and a red. Now the blue and the red is a switching. So imagine that there's a little momentary switch in here, like for example, the power button that you push on the front of your Xbox 360. So if you leave these separated and put a switch in, you can have a switchable power supply. If you want it so that as soon as you plug it in, uh, you have 12 volt no matter what, then these are gonna go together. So um, I don't really want it to be switching. I just want to have it plugged into my power supply. And so when I turn power on, I get power. So I'm going to solder these together. And then these three black are all going to get soldered together. And the yellows are all going to get soldered together. And then uh, we can check it once I got that going. All right, I got the ends of these stripped, so now I'm going to put these probably into some kind of connector and solder them together so that I've got a good way of attaching it to whatever I want to power up.
right, cool. I've got all the yellows put together, all the blacks put together with a nice little spade connector so I can set it up to a different size wire, uh, but same spade connector. And then I've got my blue and red wires together. They're just um, crimped off together, uh, so it's kind of capped. So now I'm just gonna make the little jumper wires with the spade connector, same size spade connector that can go into my yellow and my black wires. And then I'll be able to put that to the little pulse width modulated computer board. All right, now that this is done, I'm gonna get a digital multimeter and we're gonna put this in and test it out, make sure we're good. So there you go, just a little bit over 12 volts and uh, that'll be good for anything we need to. Up to 16.5 amps, so probably way more than we need actually.